What's up, Patriots? What's Chapel lapping? We're talking about China and India at war. What? Is China and India already at war? Are they going to war? Could this be the precursor to a world war? They're two big global superpowers. Let's check it out. I mean, they are global superpowers. I don't, I don't know if India is on varsity team, though. China, maybe China's on varsity. I don't, I don't know. It might be a JV square off. Who knows? I don't want to downplay either of these guys because I think they're both nuclear superpowers. So let's check it out. The Economist has this article. I'll link it. India and China exchanged their first border gunfire in 45 years. The Asian giants are locked in a dangerous standoff over Himalayan territory. India's conduct was as reckless as doing a handstand on the edge of a cliff. Which, by the way, I do know people who do do handstands on the edges of cliffs and stuff. And it is pretty reckless. I, as a side tangent, I do something called martial arts tricking. And that's like a lot of people confuse it with free running or whatever. But it's just like flips and tricks and kicks on the flat surfaces. And then there's like free runners who do that stuff off like crazy gaps and they'll be like walking on the edges of buildings and stuff and it's like can you not can you not do that that's that's not safe <laughs> it's very dangerous it's like i get anxiety when i watch those guys hang and, and dangle on like the cranes and stuff in russia and i'm just like whoa that's a good way to get clout but like i don't know if you want to clout chase like that but I mean, you have, some of that stuff does take an insane amount of skill. Like you have to check this clip out. This is nuts. See the guys who did it. This is called the manpower gap, and this is a gainer over the manpower gap. Bro. Let's go. What? All right, one more time. One more time. Then we'll get back to the the most important events with China and India. But look at this gainer, though. Dude, things I would never, ever do, ever, ever. <laughs> so like that, I'm just saying that that's like skill, but it's still also incredibly dangerous. You can't really see how high this is, but it's very high. Somebody could die very easily doing this stuff. And it's like, wow, the gainer is crazy. This clip is crazy. It's insane. You don't, I don't really think it's a good idea to promote younger people to try to do this sort of thing. I mean, like, on, on the flat ground, people have already done double gainers. And it's like, well, yeah, if you go 40 feet in the air, you could probably do a really big gainer. Regardless, I digress. Let's get back to the, let's get back to China and India. Also, this article is super tiny, unlike China and India. A state-run tabloid in China, the Global Times, which we will check right here, on September 8th, we must warn India seriously. You have crossed the line. And India is telling it was Chinese troops who crossed the line. So this is a total he said, she said. No, you started it. You started it. Quit hitting yourself. Approaching an Indian position near Makpari Peak on September 7th and firing a few rounds. A few rounds into the air. In China's version, it was Indian troops who crossed the unidentified, undefined and disputed border and fired the warning shots, forcing the People's Liberation Army to take an emergency response. Whoever pulled the trigger, Indian sources suggest that both sides did. Uh, the bullets were the first to fly along the vast Himalayan frontier between the nuclear armed neighbors in 45 years. So let's look at a map. Here we have India. Here's Pakistan, the rest of the Middle East. Comes into India. We got Nepal, Bangladesh, and Bhutan. Which, look at this little section right here. Look at this little, uh, I guess it, the, the, the colonies of Great Britain or the Dutch East Indian Trading Company, they couldn't quite, you know, they couldn't quite suppress Nepal, Bangladesh, and Bhutan, but they got whatever Jawadi was. Look at this, look, look at this gerrymandering. Look at that. All right, but regardless, we're talking about an area, I believe. Where is this area? Gaiwan River Clash in Gaiwan near Tibet. Yeah, so it's probably right around here you know <laughs> i'm really specific but yeah this just gives you an idea of who's in this area what's going on mongolia where are your horses at what happened you 
Uh, actually, I think Mongolia already invaded China and then became Chinese or something like that. I forget. Here's Japan, South Korea, North Korea. Dude, China owns a lot of territory. China looks like the end map of like Crusader Kings or a game of Risk where one player just dominates and owns everything. I I'll say this. To suggest that all this entire area encompasses one culture is a bit odd. It's a bit much. It's like, I don't, I don't know if when you conquered this area, Tibet, I don't know if the Tibetans were exactly very similar to the, the Jixi over here. I don't, I don't know. I mean, it's not like people from L.A. Are, are all that much like people from the northern pen peninsula of Michigan. But also, here's Taiwan. We've got some issues with China attacking Taiwan, perhaps. But let's check out what China has to say. This is the Chinese sort of propaganda uh, paper, Global Times. PLA bombers, air defense troops, paratroopers deployed in plateau region amid border tensions. Following renewed border tensions between China and India over the past two weeks due to the latest Indian provocations, provocations, the Chinese People's Liberation Army has been reportedly mobilizing forces, including bombers, air defense troops, artillery, armored vehicles, paratroopers, special forces, and infantry units. You guys, have, you got any hero units? on this game you guys are playing from different parts of the country to the bordering plateau region a move that shows the pla's capability and determination to safeguard the country's sovereignty and territorial integrity so this is like an undefined area between these guys and they're fighting over it now but that's a lot did you did you hear this mobilizing forces including bombers air defense troops artillery Armored vehicles, paratroopers, special forces, and infantry units. That's a lot. That's a lot of things moving. It's getting mobilized. You got anti-tank missiles. You got all this other shit. China has been practicing restraint and showing goodwill, which was min misinterpreted by India as concession. And the latest troop deployment should hopefully act as a deterrent and sober the minds of the Indians and also prepare for the worst case scenario if a larger conflict breaks out. Wow. Contrary to what Indian media would like Indian people to believe, the PLA holds the overwhelming advantage in almost all aspects, including personnel, equipment, tactics, and strategies against India military. <laughs> Damn, that's some fucking big dick energy, China. Despite what India wants to think, we're way smarter and better. We will beat the shit out of you, India. When meeting with his Indian counterpart, Rajanath Singh, on Friday in Moscow, Chinese Defense Minister Wei Feng said that India bears full responsibility for the current China-India border tensions and China's military is fully determined, capable, and confident in safeguarding China's sovereignty and territorial integrity. And not an inch of Chinese territory can be lost. Yeah, so that's a... Uh, concerning I feel like look at how small this article is too like is there this seems like a pretty big deal i would imagine that if these giant countries went to war it would be a pretty fucking big deal right i don't know shrug let's check out that gainer again though man this is so society. It's like there's a global conflict brewing, and instead I'm just watching shirtless dudes do flips over roofs. But yeah, I digress. That's the end of this little segment. Let me know what you think about global war and whether or not it'll start in the East. And will it pull the West into it? Will the East destroy itself? Will they start nuking each other and then suddenly they're all nuke crazy? What's going to happen? Are the UFOs going to have to come down and be like, hey guys, chill the fuck out? Will a global reset happen? Will directed energy weapons blow up both these places? Who knows? Who knows? India says China started it. China says India started it. I say you're both a little bit retarded. And I, I, think, I think it's fair to suggest that these areas, I mean, I guess you could say the same thing about the United States, but these areas, they don't, I don't know if they really represent necessarily like the actual heritage of these specific geographical areas, especially not Tibet. Tibet does probably not want to be a part of China. And we got Nepal is all that's left. And over here is the Himalayas. So somewhere in this area 
is a guru sitting on top of a mountain. And he's trying to tell people to chill the fuck out. So let me know what you think. I really wish I had more to say on it. There's really not that much information. So remember to take everything you hear with a grain of salt. Stay vigilant. Eat healthy. Exercise. Call your mom. Peace.